Hey guys, Jason Sensei here again. It's going to be with Luffy, the DNA of all races in One Piece. Now, I'm not going to be giving Luffy, like, the wacky Tontata size, but he looks like an Oni. No, Luffy's body would basically be taking after different species by a lot, but it'll affect his body in different ways. But, before we begin, if you have chores, work, anything, any small tasks to do, even if it's just gaming, go do that while I talk. If I talk too fast, reduce playback speed to 0.75, or if I really go too fast, 0.5. And enjoy the rest of your day. Like, comment, no, no, no notifications, are, notifications are optional. I recommend personalized. Uh, subscribe if you want to just be nice. All right, let's go. Now the races Luffy would be made up of would be humans, obviously. Then Oni, then Fishman, and Merfolk. Giants, Minks, Longarm, Longleg, and Snake Neck, Tontata, Lunarian, Buccaneer, Skypian, Shandian, and Birkin. Those are all the races that you would be mixed with. You guys are wondering why I put Buccaneer and Giant as separate? I kind of view the Buccaneers as people having a very much closer relationship to things such as the Sun God. I think it's more of an, of an inherent thing, while some Giants... Like, from what we know, everyone, anyone related to a Buccaneer seems to know of or about Joy Boy or even the One Piece. So I think that might be an inherited thing that they've worshipped one to the other for so long, it's kind of in their blood. While well, Giants, they're raised on Elbaf, they worship it. If they're not, they don't. So, eh. In this one, there's no Gum Gum no Me. The Gorse, they were able to destroy it. But, in this one, when Dragon has a son, that being Luffy... Luffy is born so sickly, the point where the dragon can only know one person can probably help him, that being Vegapunk. Vegapunk has a lot of, has a lot of extra material, and simply, as he's like building up egg he's going to sell dragon, he needs to get rid of it with the gross laser hands on it, and he can't just dispose of it in the ocean, it'll be found. But if he sells dragon, let him use it all on Luffy, just keep him away from the government. And it's basically making Luffy a seraphim times a thousand. And dragon agrees to it. Pause real quick. Okay, so once Luffy is given all of these different fruits, not fruits, but different, basically just genetic enhancements, Luffy's body seems to be a lot bigger. Now he's not like Dragon's size at birth or as a baby, no, he's definitely just a lot bigger for his age. And it's the point where Garp even tries to not enforce Luffy to, Luffy to be a marine when he is, when Luffy is given to Garp. Point where Dragon Luffy says he was sick, he was going to die, if they get on it on him, keep him out of the reach of the government as long as you can. But Garp's already aware that Luffy cannot be near, near the government. Point where he thinks Luffy's only path in life could be being a pirate. Because he thinks that's what he thinks Luffy's only path in life could be, and that's how, that's how he can be furry from Garp trying to hide him and from Dragon trying to keep him protected. But, um, Luffy would meet Shanks. The point, Luffy is probably about, like, he's seven, but due to the fact that he is a long-legged tribe member, but also the fact he's par partially Oni and giant, he just, it, like, Shanks just thinks he's a lanky, muscular kid. And this, so there's a long neck tribe, or snake neck tribe, but honestly, I don't want Luffy to have that, so I'm just gonna strike that out real quick. Alright. So... He kind of just Luffy's a really, like, a really muscular, lanky kid. And he's not wrong, but, yeah. But Luffy's about, like, 5'5". Five, five. So, yeah, he's... Like, well, I think, that's not that tall. He's 7. So... Rios has Oni horns, all of that. And giant black wings. Like, Shanks is very much aware of what Luffy is. He's honestly wondering if he's, like... Shit, if he's, like, Kaido and King's unwanted child. He's, like, wondering that, seriously. <laughs> But eventually, when it comes to Higuma, they already know they're not messing with Luffy because he's flash fried them on more than one occasion. He's flash fried a, a variety of different people, including Garp. Uh, pause. So, really, no one messes with him. The point where when Higuma and his guys walk in, they're actually going to bow and apologize for disrupting Luffy and his friends. And then eventually, it leads to Shanks and Luffy talking. And then Shanks still has his arm taken. Let's say, like, Luffy's about to be ambushed. Shanks blocked the attack. And let's say he didn't even try to use hockey, he was literally just like, he's being stupid and got his arm lopped off by Higuma. Shanks off reflectively just punch a hole through Higuma, sending him flying back, and Shanks would basically be yelling and banging as he had lost an arm because that he was not on guard. But once Shanks is brief moment's pity is over, his arm is off it can be reattached, but he simply just says, he made him he made a, he made a mistake. Now he's now he's gonna, gonna, gonna live with it. 
Where he leaves, he doesn't get to the straw hat, but he thumbs it down with his head, even though his pointy horns pierce it. He does ask, like, you know, like, why did you do this? And Luther just says, the hat can, all, can all, all, always be fixed, only straw. We just nods and smiles, and Trinks ends up going out, going out to sea, all of that. But at this point, Luffy's met Ace and Sabo. He just prefers to hang out, hang out in like like in the village because he's a very social person. So, only Luffy and Ace's child, Luffy and Sabo's childhood. Luffy's not like he's there, but any threat they have, he's dealt with before he even turned eight. Like, oh, Blue Jim's crew, Flash Fry, he's a Lunarian, he can literally blast flames at you. Or, oh, what do I get shot at? Lunarian durability, giant durability, buccaneer durability, fishman durability, oni durability. That's almost five kinds of invulnerability on Luffy's body. No one is touching that man. Flat out, no one is touching him, or at least piercing his skin. If they do, they're a hockey user. That easy. Or you have a lot of velocity and mass, but that's a whole different can of worms. So as Luffy grows up, it's the point. Oh, I'm gonna go over some of Luffy's abilities as he grows up. Was Oni horns? He basically started using those as like kind of like he kind of kind of turned into like a ball and just ran. Right, and people kind of ramming his horns into them. Him, um, for for his meat DNA, he can train all electro in his hand, but because his hair, let's say his hair is probably just shaggy and normal, thicker than normal. Like his hair is right. It's like. And I'm just matted, and it's not naturally like that. So with that, he's able to turn electric through his hair, and that turns out to be Oni Horns. His Oni Horns can also just kind of become just a beacon of electricity. It kind of just acts as more of like, kind of like a repellent, more of an actual attack, but it works. Like, if someone's going to fire, uh, like, no, that's not fire. If someone's going to slash a sword at him, there's just actually electro in his horns, and it kind of creates a small field that will electrocute anyone who has metal on them when they swing at Luffy. Or bullets. Literally, just electro in the horns, small field, well, bullets drop unless they're fused with hockey or sea stone. The only thing can bypass Luffy's Electro are literally just tough enough bodies to the point where you don't mind being shocked, sea stone, or hockey. So, yeah. Uh, his wings, he can fly pretty damn high, the point where he's reached Skypea before, he just hasn't gone in there because he's kind of just in the white, white sea, and that was a really far flight, so he kind of avoided that. But he, he knows it exists. He's super, he's super strong to the point where he's basically surpassing the majority of giants, even though oh, he's not the size of any giant or buccaneer. Like, we see people say, oh, why, why, why are your physical strength is top of the verse? Luffy has that by a long shot. The only thing Luffy's lacks is quite literally is just speed, and even then, he's still pretty damn fast. Uh, he can also communicate with every, every kind, of, kind, of, kind of creature, just like kind of like how Chopper does. But the fact that Luffy has way small things on top of being partially of kind of every part of the animal kingdom, so he can communicate to most creatures freely. He just, he just struggles to understand lizards a tiny bit. Like, if it's a cold-blooded creature, he struggles to communicate with them a tiny bit, but not much. There's like there's like, a, there's like an accent barrier for him and for him and in cold-blooded, cold-blooded creatures. And Fish and karate is something Luffy does not have access to. Garp doesn't know it. Sabo doesn't know it. Ace doesn't know it. No one around him knows it, so he wouldn't learn learn to fight with it. But he more or less learns to control water around him. Not like water benders, the fact that he can basically just control how much water he can throw out of the water. Like he kind of just throws water and he controls the velocity of how much he throws. So, yeah, you guys wondering for Luffy's stats. By the time Luffy is 17, he is 9 feet tall and 800 pounds or 363 kilograms. And that's just because he's that bulky, the fact that him being a long leg and long arm tribe member would make him look weird with how skinny he actually is. But being 800 pounds, he's honestly just really stocky. Like, he's still kind of thin for being an Oni, but even then he's still like pretty bulky. Like, physically, he kind of, kind of resembles Zoro, just 9 feet tall. You make Zoro buff and 9 feet tall, then you got Luffy. And Luffy also has Oni horns and black wings. Black, like half black, half white, but still. Alright. Now, due to Sabo's influence on the childhood, we even see that, like, in this cover story, either Sabo gave Luffy and Ace a tad bit of intelligence, the fact that Ace's tattoo is canonically, in fact, he just cannot spell his name, or at least he can, but he spelled it wrong first try, as his tattoo, I believe, is A-S-C-E, his the S is crossed out, and that could be basically mean, it has two meanings, being Ace, Sabo, Crybaby, Edward Newgate, but can also just mean... Ace just spelled wrong. So it has a few different meanings depending on how you interpret it. But in cover story, you see that one where Sabo could possibly have been around when they were kids, it's like he didn't quote unquote die. Ace is that he was spelled right, and that's before he even met Whitebeard. 
So that could probably influence, in fact, the Sabo influence Ace and Luffy's childhood to the point where they even have a change in intelligence. And that's what I'm going to be giving that, that, that to, like, I'm giving that to Luffy. Like, he has a small change of intelligence point where Luffy's one of the people who acts dumb, that's just his, his natural personality, but in reality, you just ask him any basic, like, math question or anything, he doesn't like any basic knowledge question, he'll ace it with an in-depth explanation. So, he's insanely smart, his personality is just him being goofy and wacky, so people think he's stupid. Kind of like adult Naruto where, yeah, he's a, a very smart character, he just, his personality is just him being wacky and dumb. Kind of like Sanji, too. Sanji's a very smart character, his personality is just wacky and dumb. Alright. Now, when Luffy does set sail, he honestly just has no reason to, like, sail. He literally just flies. He just kind of uses the boat as just the fact that he hold, he uses it to hold water, sake, and food. Other than that, he literally just flies and has, like, has, like, the boat, has, like, one really long rope and just pulls the boat like that. But then eventually, as he's going, in the same day he set sail, but two hours later he's flying at like almost supersonic speeds. He found all he found Alvita pretty quickly. Like Alvita's crew hasn't, hasn't robbed a civilian boat yet or anything. Like they're just a bearing crew. When you see Luffy though, they're honestly just wondering what that is. There's a guy with horns who's nine feet tall flying. Alvita's crew just she's like looks at Luffy and just simply just says, Whatever the fuck that is, shoot it. They already survive, but rifles firing at Luffy, a little electro in the horns, bullets all fall in the water. They're not. They're not hockey infused or season infused. Luffy's are wondering who they are. You ask them who they are, they said they're pirates. They ran Luffy's loose and all that. Luffy literally just floats down a little bit, and we like that meaning like two fingers just pushes the boat over. Like he just tips it on, like he flips the boat over. <laughs> Luffy would then basically be burning his way into it, going about, sealing everything that he can. He puts it all on his boat, and she would find Kobe. And he actually takes his pretty on Kobe as he doesn't he can tell Kobe is not a competent person at all. He knows Kobe is basically a dying puppy. He picks up Kobe in a barrel of sake and flies over to his boat, puts Kobe down, tells him, you can stay here until I drop you off to the next island. Kobe agrees, and Luffy would bring him to Shellstown. Still on the same day, the man moves at hypersonic speeds as he flies and pulls a boat. Everything might have to go a little slower so Kobe doesn't fly off, but even then, not much slower. One of these physics are wonky. So let's say, like, 7 p.m., same day, still, like, same day Luffy's at sail, he gets to Shellstown. We should Luffy's out at sea for, like, maybe three, four days before he got caught in a whirlpool and then had to travel by barrel for a few days. But they, they leave to Shellstown, same day Luffy's at sail, all that, they dock, and they go into a cafe. But Luffy makes sure to wear a giant coat to hide his wings because he already knows being spotted by any sort of government would be trouble. As Garp told him that, like, he's been told so, he's probably being spotted by the government, means trouble for you by a lot. If he just has like his own like like let's like, say his red vest, but or not red vest, probably like the coat he wore he wore it, wears it only get shame. If he kinda has that on, throws it over his shoulders, and it covers up his wings. Oh, sorry about that. But they Luffy and Kobe go into a bar, they don't dream for a bit, and given G Kobe actually is told by Luffy to simply just enlist. Usually most mo most marine bases have an enlistment area. Kobe goes inside, lo and behold, enlistment. Also, no one really saw Luke and Kobe pull up together. They literally just saw Luke and Kobe walk in, and no one bothered checking the boats. Most people are asleep or working. So Kobe actually has no association with Luffy, except the fact they had a few drinks in the bar. But Luffy drink is Luffy's drinking, and Kobe's doing a tour of the Marine ba Barracks, all that. Luffy overhears like, the story about Zoro. As he overhears it, he actually would ask like the bar like, people around them, asking like, "Is Zoro the bad guy in that story?" And they eventually just say, no, talk about how bad Morgan is, all that, and how bad Hanapo is. But say the other Marines aren't too bad unless they're forced to follow, to follow orders. Excuse me. We just, uh, just does a nod, and then he'd walk out to where Zoro is. The Marines are on, are on duty, but with basically two quick punches, the point where they can't even see Luffy's fist, they're both just knocked down. Luffy walked over Zoro, and Zoro asked Luffy, like, you know, who are you? And Luffy just smirks as he just remembers what Kobe told him. And Kobe just Luffy simply says, "I, I hear you're as powerful as a demon and twice as scary." Zoro decides from that corny until they actually look at Luffy's hair and see the horns, the back. He sees his own, not his own, he was black and white wings. And asks Luffy if he's a demon and one who's madder than for stealing his thunder. Luffy would stick a little bit at Zoro's joke and simply just says, "He might be, but he's not sure." But what he does know is that he could use another demon as a friend. 
sure would think for a second before just nodding, saying, I, w- I wouldn't mind that. As instead of just putting up a fight or kind of disagreeing, he's very intrigued by who Luffy is. He looks like an actual demon, like Luffy does. Like, look at Kaido. 27 feet tall, only horns, sharp hair. King, 9 feet, like not, like 16 feet tall, actually. 16 feet tall, flames on his, flames on, flames on his back, black wings, flies around, all that. Uh, giants, they're, they're very big, I think that's, just, that's enough said. Luffy's a pretty big person, black wings, like white wings, oni horns, sharp teeth, teeth, flames in his back, and also kind of have, he has gills on his neck. So, yeah, Luffy does not look human whatsoever, as having the fact that his skin complexion is pretty humanish. Same for his eyes, they're more, they're pretty humanish. So, Zoro just kind of views Luffy as an actual demon, and he wouldn't refuse an actual demon. So Luffy ends up basically freeing Zoro, basically just, like, touch, like, his hand on fire, briefly touches the ropes, and they just poof into ash. But Luffy doesn't know what race he is. He knows about Skypeans, and that's it. Skypeans, and, that, and this is where it ends. Skypeans and humans. Well, the Skypeans, almost kind of Birkin, Shandians, etc. But, um, Luffy frees Zoro, and Zoro says he wants to go get his swords. Luffy just says, All I've heard is that the Marines aren't too bad, it's Morgan and his son. Zoro agrees, and Luffy just says, He can pretty he can probably find find Morgan. Just tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him like, you know, tell me what he smells like. And the son, too. Zoro thinks for a second before just saying, The son smells like fancy food, the dad smells like booze and steel. Eventually, Luffy would put his fishman in the air, and that kind of com- that's kind of combining his fishman, but also a mink aspect. Kind of basically two animals with a great sense of smell. Or two animal species with a sense of smell. Either we'll find Halumpo in his room, but also find Morgan. Luffy just nods and says, this son, Morgan, wait, wait, which one do you want? Luffy just shrugs and says, this, who, you know, who can reach you first? And Luffy just says, I'm going for Morgan. And he just vanishes. And the rope, sometimes he vanishes after Halumpo. So, Luffy, Luffy basically blitzes right in front of Morgan, basically clearing out the entire office in a blink of an eye. Morgan immediately would just see Luffy in front of him, kind of as she's scared. Luffy's a truly some guy with a giant cloak on his back, with oni horns and black and white wings. Luffy just holds out his hand, coating it in flames, and soon we see such an explosion in Morgan's office. And then we see Zoro walk into the room, jumping out the window, holding his three swords. Now, the Marines are already aiming at Luffy, but Luffy just simply just says, I was told, I was told the Morgans and his son are bad guys. This is your chance to arrest them. And the Ripper would just sigh, and just wave, and just, just, just wave his men to arrest Morgan and, and, uh, and Hombo. And three days later, when Garp arrives, he would take in Hombo and, and Kobe. And Morgan never does anything where he cuts down Garp. No, he does not. He is flash-fried horribly. But during those three days... That Garp is heading to Shellstown, which is probably like five days, probably like a week actually. Luffy, meanwhile, had gone through Orange County Zoro. The Nami is not there yet. So Luffy and Zoro went through there, cleaned out Buggy's crew pretty quickly. Like, they got there in the middle of the night, because Luffy's ship still travels pretty fast. He pulls it as he flies. Only thing he doesn't, doesn't pull it is one, stop to eat, drink, use the bathroom, or sleep. If anything, they got there at maybe like 3 in the morning, or very early in the morning regardless. But when they get there, they clean out Buggy's crew pretty easily by themselves. Remember Buggy hit Luffy with like, Luffy, when he went there to fight, Buggy hit him with a Buggy Ball, and Luffy was simply just no damage whatsoever. Because his flames on his back were still going. He hasn't gotten in a fight aside from Buggy hitting him with that. Luffy said by that, Buggy got terrified, and then the next thing he knows, him and his crew are on their boat, covered in flames. And selling away, and Luffy robbed them of all their money, food, and water. Zoro took their alcohol. So, yeah. Maybe they kind of spent a few days partying with, like, the, like the residents of, um, of Orange Town. And that's probably, probably, probably where they meet Nami. That's probably where they meet Nami. And as she's there, she overhears about Luffy and Zoro, two pirates who saved them. Who's at the village. And she's kind of confused on that. When she finds Luffy and Zoro, and she asks them, like, Pirates saving people? I, I don't buy it. Computer says, We didn't really save them. These guys who were pirates took over their town. They annoyed us. We fought them. They ran. And now here we are. They're celebrated as heroes. We kind of just wanted to fight people. 
Not only believes that, but still kind of shocked that they're not asking anything the village. And he says, like, we don't need to ask them for anything. We, we literally just robbed the pirate crew. She asks them why they robbed her from the village, and the peasant leader says, why would I do that? There's a pirate crew that could rob. Rob pirates, so like they'd have way more loot. <laughs> or at least, compared to a small village, they're more likely to have, have more loot. Which not mean you just kind of just face palms rising. Luffy's, prob Luffy's probably right. Depends on the pirate, but he's probably right. Now he joins in on this small celebration, and when she realizes how Luffy and Zoro travel, she does realize sitting for them is not going to be easy. So she's still around with them as a friend, quote unquote. Not, not, not betraying them yet, but definitely going to try to. Usopp, when he sees Luffy flying over, has a heart attack. Almost. He walks in the village like, oh, what? Are, are, are pirates coming? He says, no, flying man. The villagers realize Usopp's getting terrified. They go out there to look. And lo and behold, flying man pulling boat. So even Kuro's just there watching this jaw on the floor. Because he's smart. Doesn't know what the fuck that is. So... When it comes down to that, he just does not know where to start. The point where he kind of like, like, like one, like, asking Usopp, like, Pirates, flying man, what that? One shrugs, they ask Luffy what he's doing here. He suddenly says, Bathroom stop, our, 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 our toilet on the ship is done. Everyone kind of has the whole thing they fall over, saying, they, 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 they scared us over that. And then, yeah. Oh, there, Luffy would let me name Usopp. They talk. Luffy would talk about Yasop. And some says on Luffy's crew because he feels like if he doesn't, he might be eaten. Because Luffy is nine feet tall, has sharp teeth, and looks like, looks like a demon. Can I iterate that enough? She looks like a demon. So, eventually, the crew would get a little thing where it comes, like, it comes down to the point where they spy on Kuro. Even then, Kuro and Jungle are both like, talking about how well, there's a flying nine foot tall man demon here. But when the cliff does fall, and the doesn't fall with the Asian gun, just flies back. Especially as Usopp's saying, you know, should I just burn them right here now? Usopp says yes. And the people will just peek over the hill. And with a quick exhale, and that, like, inhale and exhale, Kuro and Drongo are toast. They're, they're, they're done for. When their crew arrives, their captain and vice captain are tied up on the beach. And Zoro's sitting there, sword drawn, waiting. Pause. So... When the Black Empire's arrive, they're forced to fight Zoro, who just jumps at their boat immediately and cuts it down. They basically just cut down the entire crew until it comes to the, Mi the Miyabin brothers, which is still a difficult fight, but even then, Usopp is watching from the bushes and helps him. So Zoro has like, a few small scratches, but Usopp helped, helped overall, Nami just watched, and eventually they, 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 they set sail again. Luffy doesn't blow a hole in the Bratia, even if he were to, he can fly after Cannonball and pretty easily catch it. He moves that fast. You can fire a bullet from the thing from one gun and within five feet catch it. Maybe because the wingspan is long as fuck, but. <laughs> yeah, he's just that fast. So Barate is fine, Luffy has to pay have to pay debts back, and they actually can afford their food because Luffy robbed Buggy a while ago, and also kind of robbed the Blackout Pirates for, for whatever money they had. You guys are wondering how they got out of there, they would be just called Garp, or the, the civilians called Marines, and Garp picked up the crew and they had them arrested with Morgan and all them. The Bratier goes per normal until Krieg's crew arrives. And when it happened, we're going to go on to a little thing that happened beforehand. The crew is, is mentioning back and forth with Sanji, all that. Luffy has talked to Sanji, talked about asking, about, asking him to join, and Sanji said no. And Luffy just said, you're an idiot. Sanji would ask why, saying, why am I an idiot for not having a pirate crew? And Luffy's response, so you want every fish in the world to just come to you? Sanji just I asked Luffy what he meant, Luffy says, Your dream is the all blue. Every fish in the world are in one place. Why, why would they all be in the east blue? Sanji just froze, and realized that Luffy's argument, while short worded and not really hard to, hard to defend against, is also impossible to defend against. And even Zeph overheard that saying, He has a point, kid. Why would every fish in the world come here? There's fish in paradise who would never come here. So Sanji just says, so my only option to find my dream is to leave. So Luffy says, yeah, it seems like that. Leave with me or without me. I, I, I feel like you don't care. I'm just saying your dream's stupid if you're going to stay in one place. Sanji just sighed and said, all right, um, 
Uh, give me like, give me like few hours to pack. So yeah, you guys are wondering why I'm picking timelines up, making them go normal. It'd be a lot easier for the East Blue for timelines to be normal. It's just that easy. But um, we get on to we get on to Creek's arriving, and they did arrive. When Gein had left, he doesn't believe Soldoro. He doesn't believe Gein's crew is going to be nice. He just doesn't believe they'll be well mannered. So simply says he agrees, and the viewer tells him, "Hide." And if their captain comes in, talking hot shit, talking about taking over, cut, a, cut his damn hands off or something, kill him, get him out of here. You're wondering, oh, why? 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 Oh, this we condone killing. One, this is least personality. It's drastically changed because of his different species. A lot of it's animalistic, a lot of it's demonic, a lot of it is simply just warship. Luffy's personality is so many different factors because of his races to the point where he's still like a lot like Uncle Luffy, it's just the fact that a lot more goes into him now. I don't like that. But, yeah, this Luffy's morals are more the fact, he's a lot more like Shanks, he's a lot more like an actual pirate, but with a kind heart. Luffy is more like a kid, a kid with a dream happens to be out at sea. This Luffy's an actual pirate, he just, he just happens to be a nicer person than the most. <laughs> so yeah, just tell Zoro, if, he, if, if their captain walks in and talking shit, cut him down. Ambush him. So he agrees that she hides, 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 hides under a table, because it'd just be that easy. So eventually it comes down to Krieg's crew walking in. Lo and behold, they talk shit. And once Krieg gets his food, he says, you know, alright, this boat's mine now. He was getting up, getting up off the ground after being offered his food. Won't he took like a remote, remote step in like towards Zeth? He was running from, running from under the table, once her style, head gone immediately. Krieg's crew is immediately panicking, and Gein knew his crew was going to act up, so he already, he already saw calls coming a while ago. Pearl was the first one out trying to start a fight, but Sanji, no, Sanji already seen the fight started, would just jump in, kick Pearl in the face, and him flying out. And Pearl's body going to shove all the rest of the crew outside the boat. But not a Luffy in the air, he would literally just blast out an old giant barrage of flames, and it goes all over them. Game was a sort of just watching his crew be decimated by Luffy. By the time, by the time they're done, Krieg's crew is just toast aside from Gein, and well, Krieg's, of course. Gein's just watching this and just says, he's not surprised. But he asks for a boat to deliver his crew's bodies somewhere, then bury them, and Luffy just shrugs, saying, yeah, why not? So he pulls out like one of the boats, puts Creek's crew, puts Creek's bodies on it, and Gein sails away, hold different direction. Mihawk had watched the entire altercation once he saw a man flying in the sky. He didn't cut out any boats, he just watched. So he wants to fight Luffy and Zoro, because Luffy intrigues him. So, first fight, Mihawk versus Zoro, Zoro loses. Yeah. Luffy versus Mihawk. Luffy's dead ass would go and blow for blow at Mihawk, because Mihawk's base strength, yeah, it's good. Luffy's invulnerable, flat out invulnerable in his base state until his flames go out. When they go out, even then, he is absurdly durable. Like, the point where full power king durability, like flames on all that, that's flame off Luffy durability. Like, hockey is nearly the only way to pierce Luffy. Hockey or sea stone, and that's just a sea stone, it has, has, weird, has weird properties. Hockey, sea stone, absurd, absurd strength. Absurd strength. That's kind of all you, all you got to hit Luffy with. And even then, not all of it will work. So yeah, Mihawk is like touching Luffy to all that. He's treating scrapes, not even like cuts, just scrapes. He has to actually use hockey to damage him. When he starts using hockey, Luffy's body is able to resist a lot of the damage. When Mihawk's like, all right, I have to use advanced hockey to damage you, you're special. He beats Luffy, giving him a few dozen cuts, but even then, the cuts, these cuts should have cut men and ships in half in one single slash. Mihawk gave Luffy like 80 slashes, and even then, they're not that deep. He beat Luffy because Luffy has a low pain tolerance. He's not used to being hurt. As the one flaw in his durability is if you can damage him, you don't need to damage him much. So, yes, yeah, so Luffy's eventually knocked out, just because he's in excruciating pain, and Mihawk would eventually leave. Now, when Zeph does it, then Luffy simply, he kind of the obvious, and yeah, the damage, like, it's bad, but Zoro has it worse. Luffy only lost because his pain tolerance is shit. So, yeah. Well, no, I spent leaving and she actually would contact Garp. So I'm taking a minute from the action, live action where Garp had actually called Mihawk on Luffy. 
Now, Mary Boone Clark ends up meeting up with me again. He says, oh, yeah, uh, I fought two people on the crew. I fought Zoro. I watched his. I watched him kill Krieg's crew. Like he wiped. Like he wiped out most of the crew by himself. But I also beat him. It was a not. It wasn't hard, but it was a unique fight. It actually led to um, Gar being a bit confused. I was like, "Oh, do you mean? What do you mean? It was a unique fight?" He simply just says, "Attack that would have cut this boat into millions of pieces." Gave him like a slightly, slightly below surface level cut. I, I, I cut him eight times with Rewo to make him collapse. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot how absurdly, absurdly durable that kid is. Tell the, tell the government, tell the government about this, and I'm not, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna be completely honest. You cannot let the government find out about him. I like, leave, leave the bounties up, up to me. You keep the power to yourself. No shrug. Saying, yeah, sure, why not? Eventually, the strides move on. Next island, Kokoyashi. Now his whole faith in Luffy killing Arlong first shot. And they actually fly there. Like Luffy is. Picking up the boat, avidly and flying all the way to Kobayashi, because he can actually lift up boats pretty easily. He has like three tiers of giant strength. So yeah, they end up getting getting to Kobayashi one day. I spent one day, probably like an hour. They get there, like it's the evening, and at this point, Arlong's crew is very much like wondering what the fuck that is. Luffy drops his boat right outside, or drops the boat right outside of Arlong Park, and the waves crash over Arlong Park, even flooding a bit of it. As Arlong has been confused, Luffy would just dive bomb him, horns in, into, into the face. So Luffy energy gets off to his feet, throws Arlong off of his horns, and then Zoro would jump down, ambushing Hachi. Excuse me, cut him down in one go. Sanji would ambush Kirby, very, very, very few kicks needed. Kirby's off guard, not ready for a fight, any of that. Plus, he's facing Luffy. Uh, kicking the back, head, back of the head from Sanji will devastate anyone. So, yeah, like, Kirby is faced with two kicks in the back of the head, and he's done for the day. Um, Chu, literally same thing, off guard, lead ball to the dome, he might fall down. And even then, Nami, Johnny, Yosuku, they'll gladly jump in. They all jump in, Arlong's crew is basically taken out in the span of two minutes, and that ends Arlong Park arc. So with this, when Nezumi's crew, or actually when, when Pudding Pudding's crew rolls in, they find Arlong's corpses and Luffy sitting there, like Arlong's crew's corpse, corpses, minus Hachi who escaped in the middle of the night. Luffy's just there drinking a bottle of sake, while Nami's cleaning out her rooms and having fun in her village. Then Pudding Pudding asks Luffy if he did all this, and Luffy says, no, he had some help, as we see Zoro and Sanji walking out of the building, Sanji having, having some food, Zoro having Arlong's giant sword, and he says he just, he's, he's, he's just gonna, gonna, gonna collect it. Pudding Pudding tries to arrest Luffy, only for Luffy to just plunge at him, and he ran away immediately. Then, not long after, Ned and Nesby's crew rolls up, Nami told Luffy who they were, so that Luffy saw, saw, saw Nezumi, dust. Him and his crew in their boat, dust. So, yeah, the, the, the Nezumi's crew is wiped off the map easily. And Nami and the crew now have an absurd amount of money, probably a few hundred, not a few hundred million, probably about exactly a hundred million. Because Luffy robbed Buggy, he robbed, not robbed Creed's crew, but I don't take it below him that he probably did. Probably, probably did. He robbed Arlong's crew, Nami had her own money. Yeah, I feel like 100 million even sounds safe. Not like a million dollars, just like 100 million berries, so like 10 million dollars. About that. It's a lot of money though. So, yeah. Luffy's first bounty is going to be high as fuck. And that's it. Like, okay, I have 30 million. No, chump change. Let me work this down. Luffy, horribly mutilated Morgan, a marine captain, or commander, actually. Next up, Buggy, beat him and his entire crew, take a buggy ball to the chest. One thing immediately after. Next up, Krieg's crew, horribly mutilated, mutilated Kuro, or, so, more, mutilated, mutilated, mutilated commander Morgan, beat Buggy's crew by himself and take a buggy ball to the chest. Easy, also rob them. Kuro's crew, mutilated Kuro and and Drongo, and Zoro himself beat the rest of the crew. Usopp helped a tiny bit. Krieg's crew, Zoro killed Krieg. Luffy killed Pearl and nearly the rest of the crew by himself. And then move on to Arlong's crew. Luffy himself killed Arlong, Zoro, and Zoro Sanji, 
There's tons of sword and killing on this arc. He just, he just snuck on Hachi, and Hachi ran away. Sanji killed Kim Kirby. Two games in the back of the head from Sanji? Like, you're off guard. Your back of your head's exposed. Yeah, Sanji giving you two kicks back to the head ends your life. So Sanji, Sanji killed, killed Ruby. Two, probably dead. Jump, jump by Johnny Yosuke and Usopp. Done. I saw all true. Probably dead by Zoro's. By, by Zoro's hand. Sanji's from Sanji's too. Scared off Pudding Pudding. Turned an entire marine ship full of marines to dust. Luffy did that himself. 30 million is way too low. I'm telling you right now. 80 million would be a damn good start. Plus, Luffy using flames and flying seems seems a lot like a Lunarian to the government. So, yeah, Luffy being a Lunarian sounds about right to them. And once Dark follows Luffy's path to chaos, he's honestly not surprised whatsoever. He thinks it's honestly not too bad. Like, he, like Luffy was raised to be away from the government, so turning doesn't mean that the dust seems pretty accurate. <laughs> The reason he didn't do it to Pudding Pudding is because Nami something specifically told Luffy about how bad Nizumi was. Uh, pause real quick. Alright, I'm back. This is more background noise. I just want to pan up higher. I started sweating and I don't want to mess with my headphones again. Okay, so first bounties for the Straw Hats. Luffy, 80 million. That's a good start for someone who's... The government seems completely Lunarian. And killed... And killed Arlong. But also scorched. Also killed entire... But yet, I, I explained why. Zoro, 22 million. He, he killed Krieg. Simple as that. He killed Krieg. And then Sanji killed Krieg, Krieg kind of by accident, mostly. So he got a bounty for that, 15 million. So Luffy's on Sanji, first bounties, East Blue. Here they're getting new crewmates, aside from their usual East Blue group. So, yeah. Actually, so far. Uh, I kind of spoiled the next person, then I guess, my bad. The Strides eventually get to Logtown, and here Luffy fights Smoker. Smoker just to fly using his smoke plumes, and Luffy flies using his wings, and basically ends up being fire versus smoke, fire ends up winning, the smoker is pushed back, the smoker is defeated, and at least two bark may viewing Luffy as a god. So he flies around, but the follows him. Well then follows his god. He finds him, talks to him, Luffy's like, hey, you're, 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 you're kind of funny looking, and you're the only person I've met who's nearly as big as me, aside from, aside from my grandpa. Because Garp and Luffy are about the same height. Luffy is nine feet tall. Garp's about, about nine foot six. Actually, I can just check real quick. How tall is Garp? G A R P. N D D Garp. Garp is nine five. I was close. And Luffy is about an even nine foot. I look at the wondering, does he has his height cap out at nine feet? No, he's bigger. Post post time skip. I have a note for that. I have to make sure about that. But um, yeah. And um, back to Luffy and, and Bardo. Bardo views Luffy as his god. They actually have, they've been you know, talking for a bit. And Luffy invites Bardo to join his crew. And they say she's impressed with how weird Bartomeo looks. And Luffy's someone who's pretty, pretty, pretty funny, looking, funny looking himself. But they actually agrees. So Bartomeo sets sail with the Straw Hats simply because Luffy invited him and Luffy, like, and Luffy likes how he looks. And that's why leads to Bartomeo being someone with a new bounty. And I firmly believe Bartomeu would have a high bounty because he controls over 100 32, pa 32 towns in the east. I bring his bounty probably about 30 million. Sounds pretty good, honestly. That sounds kind of low, actually. Bartolomeo, 30 million berry bounty. So now, oh, that's these are the current high ranking straw hats. Eventually, they go, over, they go over the grand line, the red line, and they get into the red line with the meet Laboon. Luffy would bring up his whole thing in the ambulance to talk to animals, especially, well, sea creatures. Not especially sea creatures, but... Kind of just made many lizards the only thing he was talking to, mainly an accent thing. So him and Laboon are able to talk to talk, Laboon moves out of his way, because Luffy proposed to fight him if he moved. Luffy and Laboon fight, Luffy wins pretty, actually, pretty easily, actually, kind of dragging Laboon down so deep Laboon actually started getting crushed himself. And Luffy felt the crushing weight since so he let Laboon go when Laboon and him both breached. Luffy, like, pulled him on Laboon because Luffy himself felt, like, pressure, his flames on his back, so it was really weakened. And being so weak, his body started getting crushed, and then he's not used to. Eventually, this leads to them heading to... Whiskey Peak. Yeah, I'm sure I got that right. They're about three days early. So, yeah. They get to Whiskey Peak, and... Honestly, the moment that a fight starts, like Luffy would be just like pass out drunk, like a sock of bottom in his hand, him him like like like, like lead over a bench. Luffy goes to stab him in the back, blade shatters. Luffy wakes up, 
and one accidental burp, the entire bar is toast. But I also find that being Luffy's bodyguard because you see people here, he people here sketchy, so you see find Luffy all night. And when it comes down to you know finding out the bounty hunters, excuse me, but then and Zoro on on the case immediately, throw hands at everyone, they win. By the time Luffy wakes up, he doesn't question it, he kind of just asks because you know he likes them both like the Zoros, or reminds Luffy of himself. And by the way, also weird looking, Luffy thinks he's normal. So he, he trusts those two a lot, mainly because of their appearances and auras. So they are able to come to a conclusion. They're right, they're about bounty hunters, and they end up leaving before Mr. Five and Miss Monday get there. Pause real quick. I met Miss, Miss Valentine's Day. Miss Monday is the pink haired chick. Zoro is great strength out. Uh, yeah, same night, they end up getting to, getting, getting to a little garden, they meet Dory and Bragi. And when the feet starts, like, you know, I'm talking about, you know, who he, like, not knowing what his race he is, they end up talking about the sun god. As if he's flames, his flight, his joy, his personality, they think of him as the sun god. Now, like, it's kind of being a joke, more or less, not an actual, like, you must be the sun god. No, they think it's funny, so they call him the sun god. And they actually start calling him Nika. Not good at Luffy has dark skin in this one, because he's a Lunarian, so... So watch out, what about the, switch out, switch out the K for two Gs. But, um, we go on to just Dory and Rocky and Luffy bonding, having fun, then the Sharks that sail once more, and they end up getting to Drum Island. Nami is still sick. That's kind of just happened, because why not? Now, when they get to Drum Island, Luffy is not a bad idea for Luffy to hold her the fact that, one, he radiates heat 24-7. So, Nami already has a high fever, being held by Luffy is not smart. Point where she says she left up to Zoro and Sanji and Bardo to get Nami to safety. Not Nami to get Nami a doctor. So to, up to them to get Nami to safety or to a doctor because it's just not smart for Luffy to hold Nami. But Luffy's the one that she's searching for clues, and while searching for clues, he finds Ace. Ace was kind of at Drum Island for about a day or two before the Straw Hats got there. We found Ace, and Ace means helping Luffy find a doctor, and we find Kurei Hot and Chopper. And Wapple's in the middle of leaving, so when we're going to chopper, tell him, like, hey, meet us at the castle, because Wapple's because Wap, Wap, Wap going to leave. And we're because of Ace, and Ace is already somewhere else, but he's already come, going to the castle, because he's just, he's flames flying to the castle, but then he was climbing. But he kind of just made, like, stairs to the castle. So I just joined up to run up the stairs. But eventually, Luffy gets there first, with short Corey Hot and Chopper. Ace is their second, so I think he's their third. And Wapple's confronted with these three parties these, immediately. Or he has two parties. Well, you should know three. Straw Hats, Cray on Chopper, and then Ace is his own party. So, the Straw Hats, Cray on Chopper are their own thing, and then Ace is his own thing, so they have three parties. Now, now Popple is all his guards, all that. And he actually does ask Luffy, saying, if I ask you, like, like, I'm asking this right now, can you get rid of him, and I will treat your friend your friend for, for, for free after that. We just shrugs as Luffy and Ace both up like a ball of flames. And with one quick blast, they end up blowing up the entire area where Wapple is. They think they killed him, and out of the honesty, they sent Wapple Wa flying from the explosion. And because Wapple actually ate, ate a bit of the flames in the attack. He's then flying to the West Blue, and then all those guards are, are, yeah, they're dead. They're dead. Dead, dead corpses. Ashen. So, you yeah. know. This does lead to Nami getting treatment, she's fine. Lucy and Shepard are talking. This is when Luffy mentions, oh, yeah, I can probably talk, talk, talk to the reindeer, because I can talk to animals. Now, talk about Chopper speaks English. Or it's Japanese. But, um, yeah. I guess whatever, whatever language you want to watch One Piece in. I watch it in Japanese and English subtitles, so I guess, yeah, they speak, they speak Japanese. But, um, Luffy and Chopper are not bonding. Luffy actually is the first one to not call Chopper a Tsunuki, first time he sees him. Because he actually just did tell, tell what Animal Chopper is just because of the smell. And the reindeer's the reindeer get past, smell like this, so he's in Chopper's a reindeer. Luffy Chopper says to crew, maybe because when Luffy bonded and they're basically best friends, and Bright Isle's like, Chopper has no friends here, he, he should go with him. Like, he simply just knows it's better for Chopper's mental health to go with Luffy. And because, oh, Republic will accomplish his dream. No, Chopper, Chopper will be depressed if Luffy leaves. Is that it? Is, is that easy? If Luffy leaves without Chopper, Chopper will be eternally depressed because Luffy is his only friend so far. Aside from here, look, who's a corpse? I guess a pile of ash who got buried. But eventually this leads on to 
the Straw Hat's going on, and Nami's healed, and they end up getting, getting like, a ride with Ace all the way to, um, to Alabasta. As they talk, eventually, um, he brings a Scorpion, maybe from Alabasta's. Scorpion's a bounty hunter, but you haven't really heard of him catching anyone. He's, he's a resident of Alabasta. I'd assume BB knows of someone who's a port who's apparently a New Orleans bounty hunter. He's like, oh yeah, he comes and strikes in pirates hoping they believe his legends and then catches them. So he already knows, as it knows, we're being the fraud from right, right there and then. But as a thank you for just, you know, giving him that tip, he volunteers to help them. So maybe he talks about Crocodile and Ace says, oh yeah, the Warlord. I beat, I've beaten Warlords before, but I'll handle it. We start to talk around with Ace. And as they do Doc, they eventually are met by, by Robin. But she, she sees Ace, already has confidence. And then Luffy's the one, like, a rookie with the 80 million very, very, very bounty. That's his first bounty. First bounty's higher, higher than Robin's. She immediately says, All right, I firmly believe either either we can fight Crocodile and win, so yeah, go go crazy, I guess. He leads into where Crocodile is. BB, you know, I was like, Hey, my dad. Robin's like, All right, I'll, I'll bring you to Pilbara. Bring, bring me to bring me Pony Glyph in exchange. BB agrees. And the strats honestly go on, go on, go on, go out in the town in, in Alabasta. So. Robin brings Luffy and Ace to the castle, where they both crocodile. Crocodile. Crocodile sees Ace, not terrified, but kind of worried. He's a rookie fate with an 80, 80 million million berry bounty. A rookie. Terrified. So Luffy and Ace just ask Luffy, how much damage are we allowed to cost to the castle? He says, preferably none. Luffy and Ace just hold up like, can't like, like, just ball the flames. He just, leave at least one story. They nod. And they proceed to fight Crocodile. Crocodile, Luffy and Ace, well, Ace can use hockey, Luffy can't, but Luffy can just has actually more AP than Ace at this point, because he's more experienced with flames. Like, all the Ace's arsenal at this point is actually mimicking Luffy's. Because Luffy's the one who grew up using flames. But Luffy and Ace both decided, you know, big Crocodile and be swinging his hook at Luffy, Luffy's electro to shot Crocodile, and will really stun his body, his re re reflexes will be numbed, to the point where he won't turn into sand on reflex. So they bring the baby crocodile to, to attacking Luffy. And when she works, crocodile would actually hook at Luffy. Luffy would like use electro on his horns, catch the crocodile with it. His metallic hook shocks his entire body. And boy, he's really beautifully stunned. Ace would give him a hockey, a hockey kick, kick to the chest, and that ends the fight right then and there. Because physical power, crocodile's body on the shorts, him already being injured because of that, because of that whole one electro. He he's hit in an electric field, not really an electro, but. Yeah, yeah crocodile's hit that one attack, or just. Two and a half, and passes out. He's defeated right then and there. Meanwhile, BB, BB, and Robin free Cobra. Cobra brings Robin to the Ponyglyph as an exchange, th thinking she's gonna take it, but no, she just reads it, then leaves. Meanwhile, we see actually Zoro trying to fight off the Marines because he went the wrong way. So Luffy and Ace are leaving. They find Smoker. Smoker sees Luffy and Ace, and Luffy just flicks a ball of flames at Crocodile. Not Crocodile, I mean, at Smoker. Smoker gets hit by it. Boom! Marines are flying everywhere. And at least the Straw Hat's having an all-out fight with the Marines and the Numbers. Now, part of my doesn't know who to fight, but Luffy just says, "Um, oh, help Sanji. He, he's he's kind of, kind of, kind of struggling, I guess." So, by the way, he's helping, he's helping Sanji against Mister Two, and Ben them turning into Nami. By the way, there's hesitation, knocked him, knocked his lights out with, with a good right hook, just right hook to the jaw, lights out for Nami. Or I guess Bone Clay. Pause. So there's a bone clay from the Nami, only to face a right up to the jaw from 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 Bardo Mayo. And that was the end of the fight. So what do you think with Bardo? As Bardo sounds like a rivalry with anyone in the crew aside from like Zoro and kind of just him and Sanji versus Zoro. And it's for a whole different reason. It's because Sanji and Zoro are generally just like we're opposites, but then Bardo Mayo's like, I'm the most loyal loyal, loyal Luffy Senpai. And Zoro's like, I'm his right hand. No, you're not. And kinda of ends up like that. But eventually, all the threats in their fights. Uh, I don't honestly like. I think some combat probably being altered to shoot flames because Luffy's the one who has access to flames at all times for the Straw Hat crew. So he's like, "Hey, we need fire." Or something like, "Hey, Luffy, I'll incorporate corporate flames into, into the staff thing." That like, all right, um, flames. So yeah. So Nami can beat Simple Finger a little bit easier, probably. Sanji beats. Bent them with, bent them with Bartomeo's help. Zoro cuts through Mr. One a lot easier because the fact that he turns to Luffy, who's basically a giant wall of pure muscle and invincibility, basically. Zoro's cut tougher things, or he hasn't yet, but he's slashed at tougher things. He hasn't cut through, but he slashed at it. 
So yeah, the just ends the arc. The leave Bone Clay tries to sacrifice himself. The Marines are kind of out of the Marines are kind of out of commission right now, so no reason for them to actually like help like press Bone Clay. So here should be the time where Bone Clay joins the crew, honestly. So pause real quick. Let's just the bounties after Alabasta. Once they end up leaving after all that. Luffy, 160 million. Zoro, 90 million. He had the most significant increase aside from Luffy. While the male, 88 million, barely behind Zoro. Robin, 72 million. Sanji, 60 million. So he's number four right now. Or three. He's number five. Sadly. But uh, yeah. But I think I'm gonna end this part right here, just get the to get the, the reception on this. Hope you guys enjoyed, like, and comment for more. Get the video to, let's say, 12 likes, and get the next part. Alright, adios.